Hello everyone. Welcome to session 4 of module 4, structure based or white box test design techniques. So in this session we will learn about what is code coverage and several white box testing techniques for example statement coverage, decision coverage and some other structure based testing techniques. So first let's first understand what is test coverage. So test coverage is the degree expressed as percentage to which a specified coverage item has been exercised by test suite. So for example um, if you're doing if you have a certain set of requirements then how how much percentage of those requirements has been covered by the number of test cases that you have executed so that 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 calculated as a percentage is known as test coverage so it's a degree expressed as percentage to which specified coverage item has been exercised by test suite so the coverage, the formula to cal calculate coverage is number of coverage items exercised divided by total number of coverage items into 100. So that's the formula to, uh, to calculate coverage. So whatever numbers uh, of the uh, number of the coverage items have been exercised till now. And suppose the total coverage items are 100. You have 100 requirements and the requirements that have been tested exercise till now are say 80 so 80 by 100 into 100 so 80 percent coverage has been done then 100 percent coverage does not mean 100 percent tested because coverage techniques measure only one dimension of multiple dimensions so there are multiple dimensions of coverage so 100 percent coverage of one dimension doesn't mean that your software is 100 percent tested. For example, 100% coverage of requirements doesn't mean your software is 100% tested because there are many non-functional testing that needs to be done as well. So there are many aspects of software testing. So what are the types of coverage? So coverage can be measured at component testing, integration testing, system testing or acceptance testing level. It can be measured at any test level. And at component testing level, coverage items may be the statement or decision coverage. So at component or unit level, your coverage item may be statement or decision coverage. At integration level, the coverage items are the interfaces or interactions with other software or system. And at acceptance testing level, coverage items may be requirements, menu items or business transactions or end user scenarios. So what are the uh, uh, other types of coverage? So coverage of each specification based technique can also be measured. So for example, you have some other uh, some specification based techniques for example equivalence partitioning boundary value analysis decision table so what are the types of um, coverage for those so like for equivalence partitioning per percentage of equivalence partition exercised for boundary value analysis percentage of boundaries exercised um, then for decision tables percentage of business rules that have been covered or completed by the test cases um, then is in state transition tab table the percentage of states visited percentage of valid and invalid transitions exercised by the test suite by the number of test cases that you have executed so these are some of the coverage um, of each specification technique that you can measure so how to measure uh, the coverage? So the first step is to decide on the coverage item to be counted. So first thing is to decide what you want to count. What is the coverage item that you want to count? The second thing is to count the structural elements or items. So second thing is you need to count the structural element or the 
items that needs to be covered so that total calculation total count of the coverage items need to be there in the first place then you need to instrument the code so basically in in white box testing your code coverage or the coverage measure is mostly done by the tools so tools are intrusive in nature and you can instrument the code uh, in order to find the coverage of elements or items so third step is to instrument the code and then you run the tests for which the coverage measurement is required so you run the test against the instrumented code and for for which you require the coverage measurement and then finally using the output from the instrumentation you determine the percentage of items that have been exercised so these are simple steps that are done to measure the coverage of um, items so what is statement coverage and statement testing so statement coverage is also known as line coverage the formula to calculate statement coverage is statement coverage is equal to number of statements exercised upon to total number of statements in 200 formula is pretty simple um, it's similar to coverage uh, the generic formula so statement coverage is also known as line coverage it is basically the coverage of the number of statements in the code when you uh, the number of statements of code exercised when you execute your test suite so suppose your test suite has 100 test cases once you execute all those 100 test cases how many line of codes have been affected by executing those 100 test cases that's known as statement coverage and percentage uh, of statement coverage can be calculated using the formula then studies in software industry have shown that black box testing may actually achieve only 60% to 70% statement coverage. This leaves around 25 to 40% of the statements untested. So with black box techniques, it has been seen that mm, whatsoever, how I mean, it doesn't depend how effective your test cases are, the black box testing test cases are. It has always been seen that the the number of number uh, the statement coverage is not always hundred percent it's it's much less than that in black box test design technique so that is why requirement for statement coverage and statement testing is there and that is why you need to do white box testing uh, along with the black box test techniques so let's take an example of statement coverage to illustrate the principles of code coverage i'll take just a simple pseudo code it's not specific to any programming language uh, and it's just a just a pseudo code dummy code so the code is we are reading a value um, then uh, read x read y and then if x greater than y then we are printing a statement and just ending so in this case let's see how we can achieve 100 percent statement coverage so in this case um, in this pseudo code you can achieve 100 percent statement coverage with just one test case so if you set x to 10 and y to 5 or any any value of x greater than y all the statements will get executed so it will read a value for x read value for y it will come to this line it will execute this line as well then it will print x is greater than y and then end so all the lines of code will get exercised with just one test case so you'll get 100 percent coverage a statement coverage in this scenario then what is decision coverage and decision testing so whenever there are two or more possible exits from the statement for example if statement do while or case statement whenever there are two possible exits and you testing you you test those decisions 
to uh, because there are two exits the one is either true or false so whenever you are testing these two outcomes it is known as decision testing so decision coverage ensures that each outcome that is true and false of control statement has been executed at least once. So decision coverage ensures that your decision outcome true and false have been executed at least once. Then the formula to calculate decision coverage is same number of decision outcomes that have been executed upon total number of decision outcomes in the software into 100. So that's the formula to calculate decision coverage and research in industries have shown that even if functional testing has been done it only achieves 40 to 60 percent decision coverage so black box testing doesn't achieve 100 percent of decision coverage then decision coverage is stronger than statement coverage and it requires more test cases to achieve 100% decision coverage. So decision coverage is stronger than statement coverage. And you require more number of test cases to achieve 100% decision coverage. So let's take an example to understand decision coverage and decision testing. So we have taken the same pseudocode. Um, we are reading two values. If X is greater than Y, we are printing a statement and then just ending. So to get 100% of statement coverage, there was just one test case sufficient to exercise all the statements of this code. But in order to get a decision coverage, you won't be able to achieve 100% decision coverage by this test case because it it checks that x is greater than y which is true and then it passes that so only for the if condition only true decision has been exercised and false has not been exercised so in order to do 100 percent decision coverage you need to exercise false condition as well so for that you need uh, value of x which is less than y so the final test set for 100 percent decision coverage will be there will be another test case in which value of x will be less than y and then you will be able to achieve 100 percent decision coverage so decision coverage is also known as branch coverage then 100% decision coverage guarantees 100% statement coverage but 100% statement coverage does not guarantee 100% decision coverage so if 100% decision coverage is there then you can say 100% statement coverage has been done but it's not true vice versa decision coverage cannot test 100% of the software code so these techniques are useful for specific types of tests so the, the types of test techniques and combination of test techniques should be chosen very wisely and mix and match of those test techniques should be done to achieve best possible test coverage or best possible testing so decision coverage is not suitable for any complex decision items for example the statement given if a is greater than b or a less than uh, 10 and a plus b is equal to 20 so it, it's a complex decision item decision coverage or decision testing is not suitable for these kind of um, statements or items so for for more complex items so there as per istqb syllabus these are only two um, techniques that you need to know a bit in detail you need to be able to identify the test cases uh, based on the pseudo code um, for these two techniques and then for there there are other structure based techniques other complex uh, structure based techniques which will help you to identify decision coverage for complex decision items for example like this um, so what are the other techniques so statement and decision coverage are two most basic coverage methods um, other more complex structure based techniques are um, condition coverage 
so you can go to my blog and visit I have explained all these coverage um, st other structure based techniques there so you can um, have a visit at the blog where you will get condition coverage multiple condition coverage multiple condition decision coverage and linear code sequence and jump testing so for foundation level syllabus you should just be aware of these uh, definitions of these coverage so to conclude in this session we learned about what is code coverage and the white box testing techniques statement coverage we learn about statement coverage we learn about decision coverage and then we'll also learn about some other structure based techniques that you need to be aware of um, you can visit the blog and understand these techniques uh, more there or if you have questions you can post those questions in the discussion section and I'll answer those thank you